Thank you so much. <clears throat> Perhaps we will now uh, proceed. Um, I guess uh, the question papers have been printed and can they be distributed for our test before we get started? We've already done. We have already done. We're just waiting for you. Oh, okay. You have already done the test, have you? Yes. Okay. Um, have you handed in your papers? Yes. yes. Okay, fine. So let us just um, go ahead and look at uh, the test so that at least we can uh, assess what we have uh, understood about um, the questions. Okay, question number one, true or false? The Holy Spirit is an angel. False. False, false okay. He is God, not an angel. <clears throat> okay. Question number two: The Holy Spirit is God is still for believers. Uh, then, then we had a problem. Yes. That one is true, brother. That is true. That is true. <laughs> we not for us. Uh, sorry, I cannot get. Sorry, I can't get you. What I say? <laughs> uh, instead of uh, it written there, the holy is the seal for the believers. So we thought maybe it's one of your tricks from your bag, and then we say false. No, that's true. No, it's false. <laughs> wow. Well, what that's is brother true. Isaac saying? Brother Isaac saying is true, and it is true. Indeed, it is. No. But but it's it's not not a, a, yes. Oh, okay. There is ah, uh, sorry. There is a <laughs> typing error there. So yeah, brother, brother Isaac is saying it's correct because he had me read what uh, you know what was supposed to be on the paper. I just yes. wrote the holy is God is still for believers. So yes. yeah, the you know it's supposed to be. The Holy Spirit is God is still for believers. Yeah. I just figured, is, I just figured that out without even reading it. Sorry, I didn't even read it. I just knew what uh, was uh, the uh, oh, okay. uh, when you left out uh, so, the Holy Spirit. I just knew it because uh, I was yes. in class and we did it uh, sometime. All right. So like. the answer for that one is false. I mean, it's true. Yeah. It's true because. We are studying about the Holy Spirit. So um, let us save it, have it the teacher's way, okay? The answer is true, okay? For number two. Uh, but is that anyone the teacher's error? It was the teacher's Sorry? error by the Holy Spirit. Yeah, but um, I'm saying common sense must prevail. <laughs> so... If common sense is not common to everyone, then um, uh, it's unfortunate, okay? Maybe through teacher's discretion. Oh, okay. So perhaps what we will do, let us cancel out that one. Let's, let us suspend it. <laughs> let us suspend it all together so yeah. that um, at least maybe we meet um, halfway. But and give me, uh, and watch give out me for the, this one, okay? And give me the point. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm cancelling that one, okay? <laughs> Everybody gets, everyone gets it. That, uh, if you put true, you get it. And if you put false, you get it. Okay. So that, you know, we, 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 we strike a balance there. Okay, uh, question number three. The Holy Spirit is God. God. Huh? The Holy Spirit is God. Yes, the Holy Spirit is God. Yeah, yeah it's true. It's true. Yeah. Okay. And then question number four. There are three gods. False. False. Okay. Question number five. Elohim has reference to God in plural. True. Sorry? 
It's true. You remember we discussed that last night. Elohim is the Hebrew rendition of God, meaning to say the word God there is being presented in a plural form. Okay? Yes. So that's true for number five. Yes. Number six, the only part that the Holy Spirit can uh, take, sorry, I'll take that again. The only part that the Holy Spirit take in creation was in Genesis chapter number one, verse number 26. Oh, false. false. It's false. Okay? He was involved in whatever was created. Mm -hmm. Question number seven, the Holy Spirit is Mary, another name for God. False. It's false because that's a misconception, which mm -hmm. is not true. Ah. And then question number eight, the Holy Spirit takes over control of men to accept Christ. False. It's false. Okay, number nine, the Holy Spirit is a permanent visitor in Christians. False. Who is he now? The permanent resident. A permanent resident, okay? He indwells us. Question number 10, the Holy Spirit can be referred to in the neuter gender as it. False. It's false. Okay. Now let's see. How many got 100%? <laughs> Sister Veronica, and uh, okay. Ah, oh, we have got all oh, three. Ah, oh, that's beautiful. And how many got 90%? One. All right, that's good. How many got 80%? One. 70%? Sixty percent, fifty percent, forty percent, thirty percent, twenty percent, ten. All right. So I'm so happy, and we thank God that uh, we are all doing so well, which means we are following as we are going on with our lesson. So. Uh, I, I want a question, brother. I wanted to, I meant to ask it yesterday. Yes. Bring it on. Uh, on on uh, the promise of the Holy Spirit. Uh, what is it? The way it is written then on, on part two. The Holy Spirit is not a permanent visitor, but a permanent resident in the life of a, of a believer. Yes. And then my question, so, yeah. My question is, if he is a permanent resident, let's suppose a believer is found in sin. Does the spirit of God still reside in that believer, if regardless of him being found in sin? Okay. Good question, but uh, your question answers itself. Okay. You know, we are talking about a believer. Yes. Okay? When you sin, you lose your standing as a believer until you repent and you are restored to your status as a believer. Simple. Okay. So when a believer sins, he loses his status as a believer. So in other yes, words, and He ceases to be a believer. He becomes a sinner. Yes. Yes. And then in that state, it, in it, that state, you know. Okay, go, go on. So in that state, as a sinner, the spirit of God departs from him or her. Exactly. Uh, this is how it is. You okay? Take, for example, what do you think? Do you think the Spirit of God can dwell in an unholy place? No. Simply because... 
one has is trying to hold on to the title that he or she is a believer. What's your take? My take is there are so many believers who move around to be uh, claiming to be believers, but why is they are actually not in good standing uh, with God? So it's a really a bit tricky because my confusion was on the permanent residency of the Holy Spirit in a believer. But what mm -hmm. why I don't know that I actually lost my position as a believer when I, I was in yeah. sin. Yeah. That's it. That's the assumption. Okay? Yeah. That's yeah. the assumption. Unless mm -hmm. if God would do otherwise, which we may never know, but uh, we can settle for that for the time being. Okay. Okay, thank you. Uh, please, you have to excuse me. I'm using a noisy generator outside there, such that um, it's becoming, you know, it's a bit difficult for me to hear you when you speak. So perhaps you'll have to speak louder so that um, at least I get to uh, hear what you are trying to say. Okay. So okay. today we continue with our lesson, looking at um, point number three. Once again, I see a storm is brewing outside. There is a lot of thunder and whatever it is, should I be cut off for any reason, then I would want you just to continue looking at the north or even discussing amongst yourselves, okay? So that we can make good on uh, any disadvantage that might come our way. But I'm hoping that um, with this plan B arrangement, it will take us through our time for our study tonight. All right. So let us look at point number three. What is it about? Can somebody read? The measures of the Holy Spirit. The measures of the Holy Spirit. Okay, let us turn our Bibles to the scripture. Joel chapter number 2, verse number 28. And I would want somebody to read that um that scripture, please. Joel chapter number two, verse number 28. Okay. Uh, Joel chapter number two, verse 28. And it shall come to pass afterwards that I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons and daughters shall prophesy. Your old men shall dream dreams. Your young men shall see visions. Thank you so much. So, this passage of scripture is in the Old Testament. And it is a prophecy pointing forward to the New Testament, if you like. God in this passage is promising the Holy Spirit. From the onset, there is nothing like outpouring of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is not in a container, all right? It is not in a container that it is poured on people. You see, the language that um, Joel is using, it is a figurative language in a way because it is giving an impression as if the Holy Spirit is liquid 
because only liquid can be poured out. This is a figure in which God was pointing to something. That is the coming of the Holy Spirit in measures. Get this. This is about, about the coming of the Holy Spirit in what form? In measures. Right. When we talk of measure, what are we talking about? What is it that you understand about measure? I would say different forms, uh, brother, in cheerful. Okay, what I'm saying, I, uh, brother Isaac, forms. Forms, yes. Okay, it can be in a way. What yeah, else? Forms, Thank you for that. Forms in the sense of, uh, uh, when it comes to, uh, let me see, uh, miraculous forms. That is what I wanted to say. Okay. Yes. Um, in, a, in a way, it is true. But we are looking, you know, um, we are also looking at, um, how, how, how can I put this? The amount, okay? If you like, the amount, how much of the spirit, okay? So when we talk of measure, we are talking about how much of the spirit. Now, the phrase, the phrase, all flesh is prob is a problem. Pentecostals claim that everyone is supposed to have the different spiritual gifts because the Bible says all flesh. If we agree that the infants, the wicked people, even animals are all flesh. According to those scriptures that are given there, then we must agree that not every type of flesh was to do with what is written in the book of Joel, chapter number 2, verse number 25. Is this making any sense? So, what we are saying is that only a representative of all flesh was to receive the Holy Spirit. Therefore, there are going to be categories of the outpouring, and each category was to have its own measure. Right, right. Class, I want to make this very clear right away that uh, the idea being given starting from Joel chapter number 2 verse number 28 is that there was coming a time when God was going to give out the Holy Spirit but this Holy Spirit was going to be given in certain measures and it is important for us to understand this because failure to understand this would pose a challenge for us to be able to understand and comprehend things that we are going to be dealing with pertaining to the holy spirit dwelling in us. Now, let us talk about of the first Holy Spirit. Point number one. The first measure or category of the outpouring pouring of the Holy Spirit is known as the fullest measure. In other words, in, in other words, we are saying the Holy Spirit was given without limitation. Did that ever happen? This is described also 
as the full measure of the Holy Spirit. Let us look at John chapter number 3, verse number 34. Right quick. And can somebody read? John 3, verse 34 says, For he yes. whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for he gives the Spirit without measure. Okay, for he whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God does not give the Spirit by measure. So, this scripture is Christ talking here and he is referring to himself as being God sent and having been given the Holy Spirit without measure. So we have the scripture. Again, you can read Colossians 2 verse number 9. We have scriptures like these confirming that Jesus Christ was given the Holy Spirit without measure. And because of this unlimited possession, he could perform all miracles and see beyond. Okay. Let us just look at uh, the miracles that Jesus Christ performed. You know, it is mind-blowing. If we are to look at some of the miracles, how he performed them. Take, for example, the night when he calmed the storm. What was the reaction to this particular miracle? Those people that witnessed it were surprised and they said, or oh, even nature listens to this man. Because he rebuked the storm and the waters became still. Yet another miracle, as we go on to the grave of Lazarus, he stands by the grave and calls with a loud voice, Lazarus, Lazarus. And Lazarus hears God's word from the grave. It's okay, Sister Bella, we welcome you. I guess you haven't lost much because we also started late. But thank you for joining us. You'll pick up from where we are and then we will move on together. So, Jesus Christ was given the Holy Spirit without measure. Hence, he could do whatever miracles he wanted to do without failing. You remember after his resurrection, perhaps you might say that's far-fetched because it's only coming after he resurrected from the dead. You remember the incident when the apostles and some of the disciples had locked themselves up. He did not need to go through the door, but he came in through the wall and he was found standing in the room where the disciples were because he is God. He had been given the Holy Spirit without measure. So there was no limit 
And the last point, he says, even laws of nature were subjected to him. Any comments about the miracles of Jesus Christ, other than what I just pointed out? He turned water into wine? It was he turned water into wine. He healed okay? the blind. He healed the blind. Man. He healed the blind, the lamb. And many other infirmities. What else? What other miracle challenges your mind that you can think of? He walked on top of the water. You walked on top of the water without sinking. What else? He raised Lazarus from the dead. Indeed, he did raise Lazarus from the dead. You see, when we read some of these things and we are just uh, browsing and we read it as if in passing, it really does not make any sense and doesn't sink in the mind. But uh, when you take a moment to think about it, then you can say, surely he had the Spirit of the Lord, the Holy Spirit in him, without any measure. Now, let us go, go on to the second point, point number two, where we are looking at the second measure. Remember, the first measure was only given to Christ, all right? Only Christ. Let us move on to the second measure. Can somebody read point number two, please? Second measure or category of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, baptismal measure. Baptismal measure. What do you stand, what do you understand about Holy Spirit baptism? Or let me put it this way. Who received the Holy Spirit baptism in the Bible? The apostles. The, the, the apostles. When and where did they receive this baptism? Acts chapter 2. Acts chapter number 2. Okay. So, other than the apostles, who else received the second measure? Gentiles in Cornelius' house. Okay. Um, that one is a bit tricky. It is tricky in the sense that the Bible clearly states that they received the Holy Spirit as a sign from God that Gentiles could now be accommodated in God's plan of salvation. Because one other thing that um, we notice that after the Holy Spirit came on the Gentiles in the house of Cornelius, where they baptized in water afterwards, Definitely. Sorry? Definitely. They were baptized. Okay? But as we look at Acts chapter number 2, when the apostles got the Holy Spirit baptism, the Bible does not say that God required them to have baptism, water baptism, unlike the Gentiles in the home of Cornelius. So, what, what are we saying? We can safely say that 
only the 12 apostles were baptized by the Holy Spirit. As far as the house of Cornelius were concerned, they were required, though they had received the Holy Spirit, they were required to receive water baptism. Do you get that? Yes. Right. It's very important, brothers and sisters, for us to understand this because where we are going and the confusion that you see around you today is based on misunderstanding the measures of the Holy Spirit according to the categories of the people that God gave the Holy Spirit. So, let us revise. Who got the first measure? And what is it called? Jesus Christ, the full measure. Jesus Christ received the full measure. Is that clear to all of us? Yes. Right. Other than Brother Isaac, I want someone to answer this question. Who received the second measure of the Holy Spirit or Holy Spirit baptism? Yeah. The apostles. Yeah, the Jesus. apostles. The apostles. Okay. We are good to go. Now, when we talk about the baptism, baptismal measure this is described as the baptismal measure of the holy spirit the level is the reference to the baptism of the holy spirit you remember when christ came and john the baptist was telling people about christ mm -hmm. he said after me the one who is coming will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. So it's only Christ who baptized his apostles by the Holy Spirit. Okay? And this was promised specifically to the apostles and was fulfilled on the first Pentecost after the resurrection of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ in the Acts chapter number two. Now, we have seen Christ being able to do whatever miracle he wanted to do because he had the full measure. Now, coming to the apostles, they are receiving or they have received the baptismal measure. What abilities did the apostles have? Because as a distinguished group, they had received the baptismal measure. What is it that comes to your mind Lay on that hand. you can point a finger on and say, because they were apostles, they were able to do one two, three, and so on and so forth. They could lay on Just hands. give me one to start with. Lay on hands. They were able to lay hands. Let us put that one on one side because that's a major one that we are coming back to. Okay? What else, class? They were able to perform miracles. They were able to perform Miracles. What else? They were able to write the Bible. Sorry? They were able to write the Bible. Amen. Great point. I was looking for that one. They were able to write scripture. God's word, the Bible. Okay? Which no one else was empowered to be able to do. 
because these men, being apostles, they come just after our Lord on the measure of the Holy Spirit that they had. Now, perhaps as we are talking of the 12 apostles, do we have ladies that were also appointed as apostles? Only prophets was him, not apostles. My question is, do we have any ladies that were appointed as apostles? No. 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 Know. Okay. It's not that Christ looks down upon our sisters, but it's simply a question of roles. I'm saying this because today we have ladies who refer to themselves as apostles, as bishops, and you know the list goes on and on. Sure. You see, according to God's arrangement, um, the sisters in the body of Christ have a role different from the men. Okay? We cannot view this in terms of balancing gender issues. Far from it. That's not the thing. Okay? I thought maybe I need to point out and bring out this at this point so that we also might think about it and appreciate God's arrangement as we have it in scripture. Now, the first measure given to Christ, which was unlimited, the baptismal measure given to the 12 apostles only, and now we go on to the third measure. Can someone read point number three for our third measure? I would want to urge you to fully understand these measures. Who knows? They might appear in your, your tests, okay? Trust yeah. me. <laughs> Can somebody read third measure, point number three? Third measure and category of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, impartation measure. Third measure and a category of the outpouring of the Holy Spirit is the impartation measure. Okay. What do we understand by the word impart? Impart is like if I say I am I am imparting something to someone. What is happening? What is taking place? To impart is like to transfer something. Sorry. Like to transfer something to someone. Like I'm imparting this to somebody. I'm transferring something to someone. Okay. Yes, very correct. I like the word that you just used, transferring something to someone. Right. Now, let us look at point number A. Can someone read point number A and point number B under the third measure? Uh, this has been described by some as the impartation measure of the Holy Spirit. This measure or category is received only through the laying on of the Apostle's hand on the Christian recipient. Okay. Very important. I don't want to rush on this one. Okay. I don't want to rush on this one. When Christ came, 
he was given the Holy Spirit without measure. And he promises to baptize or to give the Holy Spirit or rather to baptize the apostles by the Holy Spirit. And this takes place in Acts chapter number 2. Now watch this. When the apostles received the Holy Spirit baptism, which is the second measure, if they laid their hands on anyone who believed, that one, that individual would then receive the Holy Spirit such that he or she is able to work miracles. But the one that would have had his, I mean the apostle's hands laid on him or her would not be able to do the same to another person. It was simply a prerogative of the apostles who were given the ability to lay their hands on certain individuals to receive the Holy Spirit in the measure that the same individuals could perform miracles. Let us substantiate what we are saying by scripture. I want someone to read Romans chapter number one, verse number 11. And I want someone to get us Acts chapter number 8, verses 14 and 15. For I Romans know, chapter 1, verse number 11. Romans 1, verse 11. For, yes. I long, for I long to see you, that I may impart to you same spiritual gift, so that you may be established. Okay, for this one, it's Paul writing to the church at Rome. Up until this point, Paul had not been to Rome, neither had he met with the Christians at Rome. So he writes to them and says, I, I would love to come let me not paraphrase, but read what he is saying. For I long to see you, that I may, I may impart to you some spiritual gift, so that you may be established. <clears throat> so, here Paul is talking about imparting spiritual gifts, which Paul is an apostle, was able to do by laying his hands on the believers in Rome. Let us go on to Romans, I mean, Acts chapter number 8, verse 14 and 15. Okay, um, Acts chapter 8, verse 14 and 15. Now when the apostles yes. who were at Jerusalem heard that Samaria had received the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them, who, when they had come down, prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Okay. So, if I am to ask, what was the purpose of uh, sending Peter and John down to Samaria? To impart the Holy Spirit? To impart the Holy Spirit. Okay? To impart the Holy Spirit. So, how do we explain all this? Remember, 
after Acts chapter number two, God's plan for saving mankind changes. Because starting from the book of Genesis up until Acts chapter number two, and of course taking into consideration the period that Jesus Christ, our Lord, was still on earth, God was primarily dealing with the nation of Israel or the Jews. Gentiles were excluded. Now, when we talk of Gentiles, we are talking for uh, we are talking about anyone who is not a Jew. That includes you and I. We are all Gentiles. But when Christ Christ came and he died on the cross. The moment his blood was shed on the cross, it was shed for everyone, both Jews and Gentiles. Now, what we see happening here is that the Holy Spirit came upon the twelve, Paul included when they received the Holy Spirit baptism, though Paul, by God's arrangement, he did not receive Holy Spirit baptism, but God, through his own special arrangement, gave Paul the second measure of the Holy Spirit because he appointed him an apostle. And he says in the book of 1 Corinthians, chapter number 15, he is the last of the apostles. So, these 12 men, the apostles, were the men who were given the ability to lay their hands on believers so that they could receive the Holy Spirit. And this is exactly what we are seeing in the book of Romans, chapter uh, Acts chapter number 8. You read from the verses before verse 14, Philip went down to Samaria, he preached there, and baptized the people when they were converted. But remember, Philip was not one of the apostles. This particular Philip, he was one of the six who was appointed as a deacon in Acts chapter number six. Now, being a deacon, being a believer, even if the apostles had laid hands on Philip, such that when he went to Samaria, he could perform miracles, he could not lay hands on the new converts so that they also could receive the same measure of the spirit that he had, the impartation measure. But it took the apostles, or one of the apostles, hence we see in this verse, they are dispatching Peter and John to go to Samaria to lay their hands on the new converts so that they could receive the Holy Spirit. Now, this is the explanation that we have dealt with so far. The explanation which explains three categories three categories of the Holy Spirit that has been given the Holy Spirit, the outpouring that Joel was talking about in Joel chapter number two before we go on to the fourth measure, let me open the floor 
for any questions and comments. Brother Kanjevo, um, you know, I was thinking of um, the danger that uh, the people that use us, uh, especially these uh, in the generation that we live, uh, you know, they, um, all of, most of them want to be apostles. But as you just read now, uh, Paul was the last apostle. And if nobody knows today, I will uh, refer them to Simon the Sorcerer. The fact that he wanted to buy the gift and uh, Peter uh, uh, rebuked him because of that he had to pray. Uh, because you can't buy the gift of the Holy Spirit. So today we must be we must realize that nobody can lay on hands on anybody who was the last one. And if they don't want to believe, you take them to I think eight uh, chapter eight. I think Brother Konchev was gone now. Yeah. He was some very people argue for the, for the sake of arguing. He was very insistent. Mm -hmm. He's like, no, there's no such thing as guys are preaching wrong or wrong. Can't be telling people to be baptized by water. It was John who baptized by water. <laughs> and John's baptism was a different baptism which we are actually doing now. Because John was only baptizing people for the mm. But now we are being baptized to be in Christ. <laughs> and for the remission of sins. My question was on uh, on the baptismal part, the baptismal measure. You know, all along I thought since they were in that upper room which they were in, they were 120 there. So I thought uh, that was also my question. Because thought, there was also women. There were women there. Yes, they they talk women about the, the mother of Jesus also was there. There were women that were there. Is it? Yeah, there were women. There were, there were women, John's uh, sister, Jesus' mother. Of course, yeah. was there. So I was like, think, when that baptism came, so it was only the 12. That, that, that we that. need to read that. You must explain to us. <laughs> That's why I want you to come back. He must come back. <laughs> <laughs> he must. <laughs> hello, bro hello, brother. Yeah. I think uh, you must realize that church hasn't been established when Jesus was still alive. Eh? Okay. So take take that into consideration. The church hasn't started, uh, hasn't been Jesus was still under the Old Testament still when he was alive. Okay. So even if you ask him that question, I think he will relate the same uh, uh, explanation the way I explained it to you now. 
<clears throat> because Jesus could perform miracles. Uh, remember the, the two uh, thieves on the cross? Yes. He was still under the Old Testament, so he could uh, perform miracles. Really, uh, they were not under uh, the new uh, mm -hmm. Cup. Yes. Yeah, I, I get you on that one. But my question was like, uh, all in all, they were 120 in the upper room. And it's only 12, the, the apostles that were actually received. Chosen. The... Yeah, but yeah. you must also bear in mind that uh, Judas uh, uh, betrayed uh, Christ, even if he was, uh, the fact that he was chosen as well. Mm. So it was still under the Old Testament, I think. And uh, God knew what was going to happen. Even if you go to the book of Psalms, it was mentioned about uh, Judas as well. Okay. That he was going to betray, betray a friend, and the friend would be Jesus. Ah. No, no, all along, Brother Isaac, I thought all 112 were actually baptized. But I come to realize today that it's only the 12 that were baptized. Not but look, even, look, even if you go to John the Baptist in the New Testament, mm. that he baptized, if you go to chapter, chapter, chapter 19, you will see that they were baptized under John's baptism. And yeah. then the disciples had to rebaptize, and they had to be rebaptized again. Just read chapter uh, Acts chapter 19, then we will see what I mean. Okay. Uh, I, I think that's uh, I still need to uh, highlight what's crazy going in the upper room where they gathered for baptism for prayer. I think it was like after the instructions that they were told that they need to go in Jerusalem and wait for the gift of the Holy Spirit. Do you remember? Acts chapter 1 page. Yeah. And so, even you can even go to John 14 and 16 where Jesus promised uh, the Holy Spirit. He said he will send the comforter. Um, you know, the comforter is the Holy Spirit in John. And he will reveal everything that was done. What is, uh, that is why the, the Bible was written after they died because uh, the Bible was complete. After them, they had to write down all the miracles uh, since the beginning of the church. So, John chapter 14 and 16 would be a place to go in terms of the Holy Spirit as well. Hey, brother. John 14, John 16, and then you go to chapter uh, X, chapter 19, where the disciples uh, were, that were uh, baptized by John. Had to be rebaptized again. You can read that. It's John 14 and, and, and John chapter 16 and X 19. X 19, yes, correct. Okay. You will see the differences between the baptism there as well. Because they were still, uh, when John, John baptized, it was still under the Old Testament. Jesus was still. I think, yeah, he was still alive, and even Jesus baptized. Uh, he asked the disciples, uh, I think the, um, yeah, the disciples, even uh, Judas, I think, the scattered, he also baptized. So, the, the, I mean, up to when it says when the day of Pentecost and fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So this, uh, they, this personal, this now, uh, what you call this article here, yeah, um, they, it stands for the 12 disciples or what? Because when we read uh, at chapter one, verse, verse uh, 13, yeah. Oh, yeah, verse no verse if we start from verse 13, it mm -hmm. says, and when they had entered, 
They went up into the upper room where they were staying. Peter, James, John, Andrew, Philip, and Thomas, Bartholomew, and Matthew, James, the sons of Alphaeus, mm. and Simon, the Zealot, and Judas, the son of James. These all continue with one accord in prayer and supplication with the woman and Mary, the mother of Jesus, and with his brother. And in, in Acts chapter 2, it says, When the day of Pentecost had fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. So did they thankful the 12, or with this group of people that we read in verse 14, chapter 1? And I thank God. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. But that's why I was asking that time when they were in the after room when they gathered for baptism, or it was a prayer meeting. Mm -hmm. No, it was for prayer. It was for prayer. So yeah. they gathered for prayer, not necessarily for baptism. So that's why like the, the figure that we have when it comes to this particular meeting, I learned. Mm -hmm. And the number that we have when it comes to uh, uh, the baptism, mm -hmm. when it comes to that, uh, it's different. But they gather for different purposes in these two scenarios. Okay, they gather for prayer. I guess that you can see for mm -hmm. that. That's how far I'm from my history. But it does make sense. It does make sense. But my confusion was on the part of the Holy Spirit, like still, I mean, baptized all the 120. But from what the teacher is saying, it's like it was only the 12 that were there, that were the ones that received the baptism. This one is this baptismal measure. It was only the 12, the 12 apostles. Uh, brother Edward, um, if you go to Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 15, that is uh, in reference to the limited uh, commission. So you can read it. Uh, Matthew 10, verse 5 to 15, the limited commission. The limited commission was uh, um, when... Jesus sent the apostles uh, to baptize. I think that was a limited commission. But it's what it was. It was yeah. Matthew chapter ten verse five, um, five to uh, fifteen. Under the limited commission, Jesus sent the apostles out two by two. Let's check there. Uh, Matthew chapter 10, verse 5 to 15. Okay. 15 minutes. This 12, Jesus sent out and commanded them, saying, Do not go into the way of the Gentiles, and do not enter a city of the Samaritans, but rather go to the lost ship of the house of Israel. And as you go, preach, saying, The kingdom of heaven is at hand. Heal the sick. Cleanse the lepers, raise the dead, cast out demons. Freely you have received, freely give. Provide neither gold nor silver nor copper in your money belt, nor bag for your journey, nor two turnips, nor sandals, nor staffs, for a worker is worthy of his food. Now, whatever city or town you enter, inquire who in, who in it is worthy, and stay there till you go out. And when you have, and when you go into a household, greet it. If the household is worthy, let your peace come upon it. But if it is not worthy, let your peace return to you. And whoever will not receive you, whoever will not receive you, nor hear your words, when you depart from that house or city, shake off the dust from your feet. Assuredly, I say to you. It will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom and Gomorrah 
in the day of judgment than for that sin. Mm -hmm. You see, even Judas uh, could perform a miracle then because Jesus gave him the commission. And that was that is the sad part of the fact that Judas betrayed uh, Jesus Christ. He could also perform miracles at that particular time. If you read that uh, 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 scripture, you will, you will understand what I'm trying to say there. Yeah. And that's very sad because uh, they were given that uh, limited commission. And look what uh, Judas did there. He betrayed his friend. Uh, I'm always saying uh, myself, maybe, I don't know, but I think Judah thought maybe by betraying the Lord, he would actually escape easily. Remember, he saw how Jesus called Lazarus from the tomb, all these miracles that Jesus performed. Maybe he thought, that if I do this, that the Lord, it is the easy thing for the Lord, he would just escape. Because if you could raise the dead, then you know maybe that was he thinking. I don't know. <laughs> but I think the love, the love for money was his problem. I think. Yeah. That was his weakness. Uh, the <laughs> love. <laughs> Remember, he, he he had the money bag. He used to carry the money bag. So he was. I think money was a love for money. Was his weakness? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's really, it's complicated. <laughs> yeah, it's true. <laughs> so that's what makes you do a lot of things. <laughs> money, money is something else. Good. <laughs> money is something else. Well, I, I, I think um, it also comes back to the idea of why people decide to get baptized or why people decide to repent uh, from the get-go. I feel like uh, these days, using uh, Jesus' example, I feel like these days uh, there's a lot of prosperity gospel that's going around there. But, you know, when you're in Christ, uh, when you follow God, you're not supposed to suffer. Everything is just must come by easily. Exactly. Mm -hmm. it, it, it kind of makes people feel entitled to having a good life and ensuring that they have everything they want. So I think maybe he might have misunderstood everything from the get go, thinking that, you know, now he gets to hang out with someone like Jesus. Was he not one of those disciples when that lady uh, broke that alabaster oil and he was like uh, grumbling in his heart saying, this could have been sold and money yeah. put to good use. I'm sure he must be the one of those guys. That's true, it? That was Like, you know, that's money. <laughs> was it too money, too much? <laughs> no, that was Judas. He... <laughs> was con was uh, trying to deceive him. Like, uh, he was actually a, a, a great pretender. Ah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. I cannot go there. I'm still wanting him to hear so many things from me. Only thing I can do is to revise what he has said. Taking us further, I, I don't know if brother he <laughs> <laughs> brother, uh, Edward. brother Edward? Yes, brother Isaac. I've sent you some books on the Holy Spirit. You can read through those books. Those are from the church as well. Oh, well, oh. I don't know. The Holy Spirit. Did, 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 did you send them to the group? Or? Yes, I saw no. it. There was. I've, no. I've yes. sent it to you, but you can send it to the group if you want to. 
In fact, I gave uh, Malasan to also. I've seen yes. the books. Yes, I saw the books and the other one with the biblical uh, uh, geography. Yeah, there's enough homework for you, brother. Even after the class, you can keep on studying there. I think I'll send them to the group. I'll send some more. To, I'll send all of them to the group also, so that others can also get some. I was and, hoping you would use. Yeah. Yeah. Please, you don't have. I don't have it. Yeah. It's the yeah. Okay, all right. Those All right. Even the conquest, you remember the yeah, I didn't know the, 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 about the group, so when I start getting a lot of messages, because... No, it was just for the, on the going away thing, so I decided, okay, I'm just not going to put it on there, and then we can all get it. I just exit myself, I'm like, <laughs> how did I get into this group? <laughs> My phone is already full of, full of, full of stuff. I don't have memory, just, I just exit, exit mm -hmm. it. Uh, because you know it's linked you can steal your money through wipe your bank account so you can't just accept everything you must be careful <laughs> if you don't know the source uh -uh. don't don't click it's, it's a personal library And, and you can't check on that book, you only receive books and you ask the books. Okay. You can't check on that book, on social, looking for books for me. Yes, thank you, this meeting. A lot of people, very busy people coming. So we're not going to touch on the fourth mention. Is there any fourth mention? Yeah. On page five. Fourth mention, you can take a tour of the Holy Spirit in reading mention. Okay. Mm -hmm. Come. Yeah. 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 In voting, voting in our own language. No, I mean, the question I'm going to ask is really relevant. We say God the Father. We, we, we worship God the Father. Mm -hmm. We worship Jesus. Mm -hmm. But there was there's no worship about the Holy Spirit, but He is God. Why? We never worship the Holy Spirit. And we even speak less of the Holy Spirit. I don't understand because He is God, but we don't worship Him. He is equal to the God. Yes. Yeah. The whole one, three in one. We worship only two, not the Holy Spirit. Why? This question is, I struggle with the question my whole life. I don't understand. And Why? I think that's when they need to come to that 